Hi, I'm Julia Sandamiska. I come from uh, Bochum. It's a town in Germany, and I'm an institute for neuroinformatics there, which belongs to the Ruhr University. So here's the demo which I built here in the three weeks. Um, so this robot is kind of a model uh, of a baby, like newborn baby that learns to look around. It learns to saccade to different target objects. Um, so it does that by perceiving visual information through the camera. So the camera is the DVS sensor that Toby has built. It reacts to motion. So if it sees some moving target, it detects the events from this moving target. And it's attached to this pen tilt unit, it just moves the camera around as the uh, muscles in our eye move our eye. Um, so the, the visual input from the camera gets into a perceptual field. It represents like, you know, the visual input. It's kind of like V1 area of the visual cortex. Um, the large blobs of activity here, like these red regions, they represent some salient portions of the image. So at some point, this input gets into what I call visual intention field. This represents targets that the robot wants to uh, saccade to, wants to center in its visual input. However, it doesn't know what motor command to execute in order to do that. Um, so this motor intention field that encodes the motor commands, it's not connected to the visual intention field in the beginning. It's like a newborn baby. There's a link from visual intention to the motor intention, but it's not learned yet. It's just set to zero or to one. Um, so what happens then is that the robot needs to explore its motor space. And for that, some random commands are set into the motor intention field. And then, as soon as there's a visual intention present there, the motor intention field is boosted. Now, uh, some intention can, can be formed here, but where it is formed is just decided by random exploration input. So when uh, a peak of activation is built in the motor intention field, the robot executes some comet, it's saccade somewhere. So it, it um, selects the target, and then it does some saccade. Most of the time it won't center the target, so the saccade won't be successful. If this is the case, then nothing particularly interesting happens, there's no learning, happening then. The only thing which does happen is that the robot detects that it has done the saccade. So it has um, successfully accomplished the, the motion, like the motor command, but not the visual command, not the visual intention field. So this happens a few times, it saccades around, and at some point it does center the um, uh, visual input in the center of its visual field. And this fact is detected in the visual condition of satisfaction field. Um, like you can see it here, you know, it receives the visual input all over, and at the center it has a small bump of pre-activation. So if the visual input would overlap, overlap with this bump of activation, a peak is built in a condition satisfaction field, and it signals, okay, I have now successfully uh, accomplished the task. I have centered the target in my visual view. So this is kind of a reward signal that triggers learning. Uh, and it triggers learning in the mapping from the visual intention to the motor intention field. This is kind of a four-dimensional matrix. And the task is to learn a two-dimensional manifold in this um, space. Uh, when this learning is finished, then the robot will know for each visual intention, for each location of target on its retina, what motor command to execute in order to center this target. And the idea is that that's what the babies do. So when they're born, they don't know the mapping between you know, the visual input on their retina and the motor command that is needed to center this input. And it's a hard task. Like you can see here, the learning is not very successful. The robot, it takes quite a while for the robot to learn. Um, the babies have it a little bit easier because normally they, you know, as soon as they can uh, grab an object, they can put it very close in their visual field of view, and by that they have only one object in their field of view, and that um, facilitates this kind of learning. Yeah, so this is kind of an interesting project because it leads to all kinds of applications. Like, you know, you can have some uncalibrated system with a few cameras and a few motors and then let it bubble for a while, uh, explore its environment, and then we'll have this whole system all calibrated and ready to go.